Hi friends, it's Mary here and once again we are on the road and at a new campground. So like always, I gotta share with you where we're staying and all about it. So uh, we left central Georgia uh, yesterday and we drove the four hours up to Huntsville, Alabama. And I'll tell you, we went from central uh, Georgia, from Columbus, Georgia over to Montgomery, Alabama, and then we drove north on I-65. So the best part about coming up here is that it was interstates all the way, so we just went straight up 65 from Montgomery up north of Birmingham, and then we cut over to just slightly about 20 miles east um, on the interstate till we got to Huntsville, Alabama. And we're staying at Redstone Arsenal RV Park. So we knew nothing about this base when we came, except that it was kind of on our way, right? So uh, we came in here very pleasantly surprised. So the first thing I have to tell you is typically military campgrounds, they hide us on the backside of the flight line. Um, and we're typically not incredibly close to the amenities such as the BX, the commissary, those types of things. Uh, but guess what? great news that's not the case here uh, we are very very close to both of those things so so it's a, maybe a half a mile from the campground to the commissary and the px and you can easily walk there it's um, a very non-traveled road the only road you're going on is one that basically brings you right back here to the campground so that's really cool uh, the commissary and the px are open or seven days a week so that's really great they do close a little early at six o'clock monday through saturday and they close at four o'clock on sundays but still just really convenient to have it open there's also a class six store here there's a gas station on base there is a um starbucks uh there is a um you know there's the food court so you have the usual sort of fast food um Popeye's chicken, um, I think there's a Subway in there, as well as a Burger King on base. Um, but all of that is really close and it's so convenient. And I gotta be honest with you, uh, this may be our first time here, but it's definitely not gonna be in our last. In fact, we could kinda see ourselves maybe making this sort of a home base for ourselves. So let's take a little walk around the base or around the campground. I'll show you some of these amenities that have sort of drawn us to this place and uh, you can make the decision for yourself. Now I did wanna tell you that this campground is located on the base itself. Super easy to get to though. Uh, you come in gate eight, which is the main gate that it takes you to. And uh, you come right in, it's right by the commissary and the BX. You're gonna pass that on your left, the gas station on your left. And then you're gonna see a brown sign on the right hand side that says, RV campground turn here and it's right there. It is kind of an unmarked street. So just as soon as you pass the gas station, know that it's gonna be that first left right after the gas station. Okay, you are gonna take that. It's gonna take you right back to the campground. It kind of dead ends at the campground. So it's very easy to find, but because it is on the military installation, you will have to pass through a checkpoint. You'll have to show your ID, your credentials, but keep in mind that this particular base does allow military active duty, retirees, disabled veterans, um, NASA employees and retirees. So um, uh, lots of different people can take advantage of it. Um, and if you put in Redstone Arsenal RV Park in your GPS, it took us right to it. So it brought us to that gate number eight and right in, which was super close. So just put that in your GPS, you should be able to find it. So the first thing that I want to share with you is I'm standing right in front of our RV and our campsite and right back here in the background you can see there it is so you can see that there is a storage lot here as well and it's right close to the campground which is super nice. Now you can tell here that the roads are gravel um, in the campsite itself. The perimeter road is paved, but inside the campground, the sites uh, or the, the gravel, the road is gravel. 
But check this out, y'all. Here are the sites, okay? Completely cement paved, super wide, because as you know, our, camp, uh, or our camper has four slides. So we have slides, three slides on the back side, and we have a slide on the front side, and we have tons of space here. Um, the campsites have the um, picnic tables like always, and this thing is so deep that we have ours, our gooseneck is right there at the edge of the cement pad, but you can see that we have plenty of room back here to park our truck right up on the cement as well. In fact, we could easily park two cars here uh, behind our, our RV, which is really nice. Um, this is a full hookup site. So as we go around here, uh, you can see that we have water, we have sewage, and we have electric. Now, I will tell you, you can see there that we have our cable cord plugged in. We were so excited when we saw the cable, but I gotta be honest with you, no cable. Uh, the cable does not work. So they must have had it at one time, uh, but it currently is no longer available. So no cable, but water, sewage, and electric. And here I'll show you an empty site and you can just see how incredibly long they are. And not only long, they are probably double the width of most RV spots from front to back. Sometimes they'll have, um, you know, a little section that I call it the patio area, uh, but this one, it is, that patio is the length of the entire uh, spot, which is really nice. Now, at this particular campground, I would say 99% of the sites are all pull-throughs. The exception to that are these sites that you see over here, which is just on the opposite side of ours. These six or let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, these seven sites are the only back-in sites at the campground. These were the original sites, and uh, while there's not a problem with them, they still have full hookup and all that, the biggest downside to these is, you can probably tell right there, the water and the electric and the sewage are way up front in these sites. Look here, I'll go, I'll zoom in a little. Look how far up in the site they are. So if you have a big rig like we do and you back it all the way up, you're gonna have to have a pretty long cord and, um, and sewage hose to make that work. But only if you're on those sites would that matter. All the others are pull through sites. So let's take a walk around. Now this pavilion is located in the campground as well, and you can utilize that for larger functions. And there is a outdoor charcoal grill that you can use uh, with that as well. And also over here by the pavilion, there is a fire pit. Now we've had a lot of wind and weather lately, so there's a few tree limbs down, but there is a fire pit available uh, for you to build a fire over here as well. Now this is one of two bathhouses at the campground and we're gonna go inside and take a look. Here we are inside the women's uh, bath area and there is one sink, there are two toilets, one is handicap accessible, the other is not, and then there is one shower available. And uh, it is both handicap and non, so you can see that there is a shower seat in there, an adjustable shower head, and this is the area that you can use uh, to get dressed, and there is a privacy curtain there. Not fancy, uh, but it is cleaned every day, and honestly, with a full hookup uh, kit sites, we won't use these facilities much, but just wanted to make sure that you were aware that they were here. And right next to the bathhouse is the laundry facility. So you can see that this does have a little covered outdoor area uh, with ceiling fans and tables where you can sit out here and enjoy the weather. And then we'll quickly go inside and check out the laundry facilities themselves. 
So now we're inside of the laundry facility. You can see that there are um, machines that you can purchase laundry items if you need it. There's also the book exchange. You know, there's always a little bit of that going on, books and videos. Uh, this bulletin board has some great information about things on the base, including information about the Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi here on the base that you can utilize. Now there are four washers and four dryers, and it's a dollar each to wash and a dollar each to dry, which is super affordable. And of course, you can see that there is plenty of counter space for you to do the folding of your clothes, as well as a cart there to collect your items. And there's room for you to sit comfortably while you wait if you're gonna do that inside, as opposed to that covered area outside. There's also a change machine available. So if all you have is bills, don't worry, they can, uh, you can make change right here and use that for the machines. So I just wanted to give you a sense of the size of the campground. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and then just scan the campground so that you can see. Now we were over here on this far, far um, outside row over there. And then as I pan over, you can see all these sites and like I said each one of them is a pull through site and full hookup and it goes clear back here so lots of campsites I believe there are about 70 currently and then we're going to move over here and you can see that in this area where there is dirt being moved they are actually putting in 25 additional sites right back here so they are expanding this campground even as we're here now just beyond the laundry room is this fenced in area and this is actually a dog park area. Now uh, it's a nice large area, plenty of fences to make sure your animals don't get out. Not a ton of grass, it's primarily um, gravel, uh, but there is a cute little hydrant there, a couple of those so your dogs can use those. And uh, there is water fountains for the humans who might need a drink while they're there. And as you can see, there are quite a few campers that stay here. And the great thing about this particular campground is the cost. It is just $25 per night to stay here with those full hookups, which is amazing. Now they currently have a two month limit or eight week limit on your stay. However, you can extend that stay beyond that eight weeks as long as there's space available. And uh, we were told by the camp host that that is almost always the case. So uh, you can uh, start with that eight weeks and then you can certainly extend for a longer period of time. Now I'm gonna stand here and just sort of zoom out as far as I can, you see where that blue car is coming in? That is the road that actually would take you up to the commissary. You'd go up there and then turn right, and the commissary and the BX would be right there. We'll actually take you and show you those amenities a little bit later on in the video. Now this is the second bathhouse. So the first one that we saw was right down this road. And this is the second one. So we're gonna go inside and take a look at it as well. Like the other one, just a slightly different color scheme. There's one sink, there are two toilets, one is handicap accessible, and then there is one shower available. And just like the other one, it is handicap accessible, does have a curtain and a privacy area here to get dressed. Um, Pretty much the same MO. It's not fancy, but it's nice, meets the needs. And again, with the full hookup, you don't necessarily use these as often as you would if there weren't a full hookup. Now this area of the campground, which is the greatest majority of it, right? So it goes from down here, clear up here to the first two, um, excluding the first two rows of camping. These are all for longer term campers, all right? One month, two months, um, maybe even three weeks. They're probably going to put you down here in this area. They're all pull through, so it's not a big difference. I just wanted to make you aware of it. But then up where we're currently camping, that's what they refer to as short-term camping. 
um, and that's people who are coming and going um, at a more frequent pace. We're just going to be here four days, so we're staying in that area. There were a couple of campers on both sides of us um, that arrived the day before us and, uh, and left today. So um, just so you know, there's some longer term and there's short term, and you'll notice that most of the campsites over here in the long term are pretty full. I mean, there's a few, I'd say maybe six or eight empty spots over here in this longer term area, which is why they're adding 25 more sites uh, because they really feel as though uh, they can probably fill those up with long-term campers as well. Now, some of the other amenities that are available to you here on this base, there are a lot of biking trails and hiking trails. In fact, I'm going to spin around this way. You can see that there's a little bit, um, probably most people wouldn't call that a mountain, but um, it's sort of a large hill maybe. Um, but anyway, there are several biking trails that you can take and they vary in difficulty. Uh, so you can go from pretty easy to pretty difficult biking trails. There's also a four mile hiking trail here on the base as well. The base also has a swimming pool, um, and we'll go show you those other things like the commissary and the BX, we'll show you that in just a little bit, but there's a lot of other things that you can do. Uh, one of the other activities that I wanted to make you aware of in this area is the, the space, um, US Space Center, sorry, lost it for a second. The US Space Center is located here. Now, here's what I'm gonna say about that. Uh, we went to Kennedy Space Center first. Then we went to this Space Center. This is not Kennedy Space Center. Now, I'm not saying that to discourage you from going. That's not my intent at all. Um, I just wanted you to know if you are expecting something similar to that, then um, I just want you to be aware that that's not what it is. There is some really great information there, and the reason why it's relevant here is because Redstone is where they made the Redstone rockets when the uh, when the space program first began and they were made right here um, at Redstone Arsenal. So there you go, a little bit of history. Uh, but go check it out if you want to. I will tell you um, that there's a lot that goes on there for kids. In fact, there is a space camp that kids can go to and adults or as a family. Um, but it's an interesting place. Just wanted to make you aware if you're looking for sort of a Kennedy Space Center 2.0, that's probably not what you're gonna find. But it's an interesting place to go, something you might wanna check out when you're in the area. There's also a botanical gardens that you can check out right on your way uh, to the Space Center and a lot of other things to do here in the greater Huntsville area. So I talked about how the, um, the main base and the amenities that you would use there are very close. So this is that road that I showed you earlier where that blue car was sitting. And we're just gonna come up here. Now, if we take the jog to the left that you see right there, that's gonna take us out to the main road. And that's the way we actually came into the campground. But this time we're actually gonna turn to our right and it is going to take us right over here to all the things you're probably going to want to use while you are on the base. So we're just gonna drive right up here and we're gonna to come to this very first light and everything you want to need is gonna be directly in front of you. Now, like I said, this is just about a half a mile. Um, tomorrow, we actually plan to walk over here during our lunch hour, um, just to give us a little walk and get us out and get us moving. Um, and it's certainly close enough that we can do that. And there's just not a ton of traffic, so it would be a really safe way to do it. So this is the main exchange, and we went in there yesterday, went in again today. They have a lot in there. Um, there's a good selection of clothing for men, women, and children. There's a great outdoor area. They do have a gun area in here, if that sort of thing interests you. A very nice area for um, electronics, things of that nature. And then over here in this end, this is the food court. So they have a Popeyes. I believe they have a Subway. I think there might be a Philly steak um, and some other things. So that's all located inside the main exchange itself. 
Now, connected to the main exchange is the commissary, and you see this entrance here in the center of the screen. If you go in that entrance, you can go right to go to the VX, or you can go left to go to the commissary. And this whole building is the commissary. Really good sized commissary, great meat department, produce. It's got a deli and a bakery. Everything you could need is going to be located right inside of that building. Now also located right here in this sort of mall area, if you will, is a Regions Bank that does have an ATM machine, as well as to the left of that bank, there's a Burger King right here in the parking lot of the commissary and the BX. Also located right here in this same area, the same mall area is a Starbucks. So if coffee's your thing, you can certainly get it here. Now, just across the road from that BX and commissary mall area is a car wash and they have one that's an automated here on this end and all the others are bays that you can do the washing yourself. Also beside this car wash is the gas station, which is the express gas station that you see right there, as well as a shopette, which includes the class six liquor store, all conveniently located right by the commissary and BX, as well as the RV park. So just to recap, this is Redstone Arsenal in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. That is an army base and uh, it's really, really great here. Uh, we are so impressed with just the base, the campground, everything about this area that we're actually considering this as a home base for us. Um, if Phil should have to go back to the office a couple of days um, um, a month, then we may actually just stay down here uh, and he would make the drive back to Indiana um, because we feel like it's far enough south that we won't have an issue with uh, as much freezing here, um, but it's also um, close enough that he could make that drive um, a couple of times a month if necessary. So that's kind of what's on our mind with all of this. Uh, we love the base. I hope you got a sense um, of what it has to offer. And I don't know, for those of you who have been out of the military um, a while or you know, you're old like us. Um, <laughs> the thing that we love the most about this base is that it reminds us of the military bases of old, right? It just has sort of this, uh, this comfortable feeling. You are close to the amenities that you used when you were uh, living on the base. In fact, uh, little fact, uh, this area of the base where the campground exists, it used to actually be housing. Um, and when the housing was no longer needed on base, they leveled it and then they made it camping instead. So uh, we're really excited to be this close to the base and all the great things that it has to offer. Uh, the greater Huntsville area has a lot going on. In fact, we learned today that Huntsville is the largest city in Alabama. It actually surpassed Birmingham just recently. So uh, there's a lot here to make us love this place and the campground is phenomenal. So I hope that you'll come and check it out and and uh, maybe you'll end up staying here like we're thinking about doing. I don't know. Um, if you do, come introduce yourselves, right? Um, we'll be in this Jayco 355 MBQS. So if you see us hanging around with our big red truck, come and say hi. But as always, we are Hendrick home on the highway. And we will see you down the road at our next campground.